إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله والصحب وسلم تسليما مزيدا My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Around this time of year Every year we hear about the importance Of preparing for Ramadan And no doubt Preparing for Ramadan Is essential That every Muslim prepares himself in order to make and take advantage of Ramadan and to make it the best Ramadan possible. And in today's khutbah, I want to share a story with you that happened to me a few years ago when I was preparing for Ramadan and I was reflecting as I went through the same books time and time again to prepare my lectures and my reminders. And as I was reflecting, I said, subhanAllah, there has to be more to this great pillar than just the normal reminders we do each year. It has to be something deeper. When you look at the fast, the siyam, it's one of the pillars of Islam. And if you remove the pillar of anything, what happens? It collapses. As I was reflecting and looking for deeper meaning behind the wisdoms and the things that we do in the fast, I came across a hadith, a hadith which I knew from long ago, but subhanAllah, reflect on this hadith and the relationship of fasting with this hadith. It's a general hadith. But if you reflect on the meaning, and you reflect on the meanings of Ramadan, subhanAllah. And this hadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an, and Sunan Imam Tirmidhi, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, about أكثر ما يدخل الناس الجنة the most things that will make the people enter into the Jannah he said عليه الصلاة والسلام تقوى الله وحسن الخلق the taqwa, the fear of Allah and good manners وسئل عن أكثر ما يدخل الناس النار and he was asked عليه الصلاة والسلام what are the most things that will make the people enter into the hellfire he said الفم والفرج The tongue and the private parts Look at these two things The main two things that enter the people into the Jannah The taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the good manners And look at the most two things that enter the people into the hellfire The tongue and the private parts And look at the relationship that these four have with the fasting The main objective that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an when it comes to why fasting was prescribed for us. What does Allah say in verse 183 in Surah Al-Baqarah? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you have believed, fasting has been prescribed for you. Just as, just as it was prescribed for those before you, perhaps that you were what? you will become righteous. You will obtain the taqwa. The main objective. And what enters the people into the Jannah the most? The taqwa of Allah. Subhanallah. The taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the meaning of a taqwa? As the scholar said, to do what you were ordered to do and stay away from what you were told to stay away from. Or, as some of them described it, أن تجعل بينك وبين عذاب الله وقايا. To put between yourself and the punishment of Allah a wiqai, a barrier. And look at our actions as we're fasting and you'll see the implementation of the taqwa. We strive our best to make sure that nothing harms our fast. Nothing nullifies our fast. We strive our best to make sure our fast is accepted. All of this is the implementation of the taqwa. In fact, if you were look at, to look into the Qur'an and the relationship between taqwa and fasting, 
and the objectives that we have, the things that we hope to obtain during Ramadan, one of the main objectives that any Muslim has is that Allah accepts his fast. We do everything and anything to make sure that nothing happens to our fast. Even if a little bit more water came into your mouth when you're making wudu, you'll find some brothers, they come and dry it off to make sure no water goes inside. Doesn't want anything to mess up his fast. He wants to make sure that Allah accepts his fast. What does Allah say in the Quran? إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ That Allah, indeed Allah, accepts from the muttaqin, from the ones who have the taqwa. Look at the relationship. Taqwa and the fast. And what we want to be accepted, Allah only accepts from the muttaqin. We want in our fast to gain the reward. And we want Allah to forgive our sins. What does Allah say in the Quran? وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْذَمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا That whoever fears Allah, Allah will forgive his bad deeds and will increase him reward. The same thing. Also from our fast, we want to obtain the Jannah. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who enter into the Jannah. Allah says in the Quran about the Jannah, أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That it has been prepared for those who are the muttaqeen, those who have the taqwa. And also through our fast, we hope to obtain being saved from the hellfire and being saved from being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah. And Allah says in the Quran, ثُمَّ يُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا And then we will save the ones who have the taqwa. نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا We save the ones who have the taqwa, the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we reflect on this. The relationship between establishing the taqwa and between all of the objectives that we hope to establish during Ramadan and to achieve during Ramadan. The good manners. The second thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith, look how Ramadan trains us to have good manners and to control ourselves and to control our tongues and make sure we have the best we're at the, the highest level of manners during this blessed month. SubhanAllah, when it comes to good manners, we tend to forget the status of good manners in Islam. Not realizing that having good manners is part of being a true believer. And you'll never be a true mu'min, a true believer, unless you have true and proper good manners. The Prophet wasallam said, أَكْمَلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا that the best of the believers in their iman are the strongest and are the best in their manners. The Prophet ﷺ in the other hadith and Sunan Imam Tirmidhi he said that the most love to you, the most love from you to me, inna habbukum ilayya, and the closest to him, to the Prophet ﷺ, yawm al qiyamah, who are they? Ahasinukum akhlaqa, the ones who have the best manners. The Prophet wasallam told us with our good manners, we can reach the level of the one who is the Sa'im al-Qa'im, the one who is fasting during the day and praying during the night. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, ma min shayf al-mizan afqal min husn al-khuluq, that there's nothing heavier in the scale of good deeds, yawm al-qiyamah, than good manners. The most two things that went to the people into the Jannah, the taqwa of Allah and good manners. And the fasting comes, the fasting comes to focus on establishing the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the good manners. The most two things that went to the people into the hellfire, the tongue and the private parts. Let's look at the fast as well. If somebody were to curse at you, to say something to you when you're fasting, what do you say? Inni sa'im, inni sa'im. I'm fasting, I'm fasting. You don't want to ruin your fast in any way. You control your tongue. And Ramadan comes to remind us of this importance of the way of the true believer. The Prophet wasallam said in the hadith which came in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. And pay attention to this introduction. When the Prophet wasallam says, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day. And this is something serious, what he's about to say, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Then he should say, say good 
He says good or he stays silent. You believe in Allah on the last day, you have true iman. Then you only say good or you stay quiet. This is the way of the believer. The Prophet wasallam told us in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari that one word, one word that the person speaks with, لا يلقي لها بالن. He doesn't think it's something serious. It's not a big deal. And how many times, my dear brothers and sisters, these small words, one word, we make it as a joke. It's no big deal what we're saying. But what happens with this one word? Yahwi biha fi jahannam. That this one word is the reason for him sinking deep into the hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about these two as well. These two things that went to the people into the hellfire. The tongue and the private parts. He said alayhi salatu wa sallam. Man yadmin li ma bayna lihyayhi wa ma bayna rijlayhi. أَضْمِنْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ That whoever guarantees for me what is between his two jaws and what is between his legs, I will guarantee for him the Jannah. Safeguarding your tongue and safeguarding your private parts. SubhanAllah, during Ramadan, we train ourselves to safeguard our private parts by withstanding and refraining from that which is halal for us. We leave that which is halal for us. <coughs> and that, SubhanAllah, Amazing, each year when Ramadan comes, this is one of the main things we need to reflect on. As believers, we're not just fulfilling something that is fard, something that is one of the pillars of Islam. We need to focus on the, the objectives of fasting. Why we fast? What is the ruh? What is the essence of fasting? What is fasting teaching us? What is it training us to do? SubhanAllah, if I can refrain from doing that which is haram, Oh, excuse me, from doing that which is halal. If I can refrain from doing that which is halal for 14 hours, then can I refrain from doing that which is haram as well? I left that which is halal for me. It's halal for me to eat and drink. But I'm fasting. <clears throat> my, my mouth is a bit dry now. And I, I put the water down. That's an implementation. Submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the fasting comes to train us, to teach us to do. Subhanallah. As I was reflecting with some of the brothers, the five pillars of Islam, from the amazing things of fasting, is that the fast has a relationship with all five pillars of Islam. The fasting has a relationship with all of the other pillars, or the other four pillars. People were like, how is that possible? Where's the relationship between Fasting and Salat and the Shahadatain and, and Hajj. First of all, the Shahadatain. What is the relationship between the fasting and the Shahadatain? We fast, and fasting is the main type of worship that focuses on the ikhlas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True sincerity. No act of worship has the type of ikhlas that fasting does. Because nobody knows if you're truly fasting except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ikhlas, the shahad of la ilaha illallah is implemented through our ikhlas. And we follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, in Ramadan you'll find that it's one of the times where the Muslims are closer to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They strive to do the things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. So we see the relationship between the shahadatain. What about the prayer? Alhamdulillah, we have the tarawih, as all of us know. But even the five daily prayers, the Muslims close guard on it more. The Muslims come to the masjid more. The Muslims pray the sunnah more. All of this is reviving the importance of the prayer during Ramadan as well. And when it comes to the zakat, many of the Muslims, they pay their zakat during the month of Ramadan, the zakat of their money. And also, we have zakat al-fitr at the end of Ramadan. Tayyib, what about the hajj? What is the relationship between the siyam of Ramadan, the fasting of Ramadan, and the hajj. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, where he said that the umrah during Ramadan, which is the small form of hajj, the minor pilgrimage, the umrah, he said that umrah in Ramadan, ta'dil hajja, that equals hajj. And in the narration in Sahih Muslim, he said, hajja ma'i, a hajj with me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all and make us from those who reflect on these meanings during the month of Ramadan, 
بارك الله لي لكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وياكم بما فيهما من الآية والحكمة أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم My dear brothers and sisters, this khutbah today was a reminder for myself and for all of you about the importance of not just going into Ramadan with the same routine each year, but reflecting on the benefits that we gain from the month of Ramadan. And from all of the actions that we do, why do we fast from this time to that time? What are the benefits? What do I gain by withstanding from food and drink? Think about it. It's not just about implementing the command. It's enough. If we do something by implementing the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yakfi. That's enough, no doubt. However, when we want to reflect on the meanings, on the essence of these ibadat, these acts of worship, this is what's going to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what's going to increase us in our yaqeen, our certainty of this deen. But when you just do things like routine, you don't really gain as much from it. But when you reflect on the wisdoms of why you do these things, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps you obtain the taqwa. What is the importance of taqwa? What is the relationship between my fasting and taqwa? How am I establishing the taqwa through fasting? Subhanallah. Nobody knows what you're doing except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're leaving all of these things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing it in this certain way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the taqwa. Reflect on these meanings. When you reflect on the meanings, it takes your iman to another level. Ramadan comes each year as a reminder, as a boot camp, a training session for the Muslim to train you to how you need to be throughout the year. Reminding you of the importance of having a khalas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship. Remind you of the importance of following the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reminding us of the importance of having good manners. Remind us of the importance of all different acts of worship, not just fasting. It reminds us of the importance of the salat, of giving sadaqah, of doing all forms of good deeds during this blessed month. It reminds us of the importance of patience, of having sabr of controlling our anger, all of these things that can ruin our lives if we don't have them, all of these things that will keep us from achieving true success. Ramadan is training us for these things. It reminds us of the importance of being forgiving and forgiving others and caring about others and those who are less fortunate than us. Ramadan comes and gives us health benefits, subhanAllah. Even Non-Muslims, non-Muslim scientists and researchers have found the benefits of fasting. Even they have found the benefits of fasting that sometimes we as Muslims don't focus on these benefits. We have so much khayr in our deen, but we don't focus on these benefits. Reflect, research on this. Go back and, and look, they talk about the benefits of fasting. Leaving food and drink for this many hours and the benefits that it has to your body. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with it. We need to focus on these benefits and this should increase us in our iman and increase us in our qeen, our certainty and have us return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repenting to Him, benefiting from this month of Ramadan. ثُمَّ إِعْلَمُوا رَحِمَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَمَرُكُمْ بِأَمْرُ بَدَا بِي بِنَفْسِهِ ثُمَّ ثَنَّ بِمَلَائِكَةِ الْكِرَامِ فَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا وَيَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ صَلَّى عَلَيْهِ بِوَاحِدَةٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِهَا عَشْرَةٍ اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وانعم على نبينا محمد وارض الله من الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وانسائر الصحابة أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اللهم عداك عداء الدين اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها 
ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم إننا نسألك أن تكون عونا ومعينا لإخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقيموا الصلاة يحمكم الله